You know, I'm embarrassed to say Rick Santorum is an old, old friend of mine, and I haven't been able to keep up with him because I'm running from state to state doing a thousand things. But that's no excuse, Rick. How are you, my old friend? I'm doing great. And I just I am so excited to be on your show tonight because it gives me the opportunity to congratulate you and thank you because you and Ed me and so many of the Reaganites, lawyers, conservative lawyers, you know, you know, set up a, uh, a template for other conservatives to understand what, you know, originalism was and what conservative values were and how they applied to the law. And, you know, the seeds you planted 30, 40 years ago, Mark, have come to fruition here in the last week. Three great decisions, Second Amendment, pro-life, religious liberty. And, I, you know, you're not you deserve a lot of credit for that. Ed Meese oh, deserves I mean, so many who, who in the vineyards out there for years worked on this to train lawyers to think the right way about the Constitution. So God bless you and thank you. Well, aren't you kind? And by well, the way, true. it's true. You, it's should, not you it's true. should. Well, you should pat yourself on the back. This is one of the issues you fought like hell over and wrote about. And you explained this very, very eloquently. You won two important elections in Pennsylvania, which wasn't easy to do. No. And, well, uh, and you're still in the vineyards fighting like hell, aren't you? What are you fighting on now? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, you, this is an issue that you brought to me, and yeah. I was I was a skeptic. I'll be very honest with you. I was a skeptic, and you uh, you I won't you you sort of beat me up one side of the head and down the other, oh, and geez. I eventually uh, eventually came to to the understanding that you were not only right, but in recent years I have I have be you know I'm sort of like a reform smoker. Um, I, I am I am a zealot on this issue of convention of states. Yes. And I've sort of joined joined forces with Mark uh, Meckler at Convention of States, and and so Wonderful. this year alone, I've been to twelve state capitals, traveling wow. the country, and and trying to get this issue because our our republic is in danger. I'd love what happened with with the overturning of Roe and return to federalism, but if we're we're going to be successful, we need to return to federalism, not just on the life issue, but on every issue. If we're going to survive as a country. We can't have California, tell, you know, imposing their laws on everybody through through some progressives in Washington and vice versa. You know, it's it, we, you know, the, the California is not going to stand for us trying to impose our values on them. And and the key that our founders understood was federalism. And the only way to do that is to take power out of Washington and get it back to the states. And that's what the Convention of States is all about. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a vote coming up, no? In Pennsylvania, and you know, Mark, and I, I need your help on this one. And and yeah. I reached out to you for a reason. There's a group in Pennsylvania, well-meaning people, uh, who are a gun rights group, who are out there. Now they're a pain in the ass, and I, I've been fighting these fools now for years. I know. Well, Go ahead. And, and but they, you know, we have a bunch of really strong pro Second Amendment senators who are just, you know, who are who are, you know, sweating. Because they don't want to offend the gun people, because they're really strong. Not all the gun people. Not all the gun. What do you tell them? Tell me what you tell them. Rick, Rick, not all the gun people. Just this one group, right? What is this group called? It's called FOAC. That's the name of the group. Folak, what is yeah. that? A rash? Firearm? Something? I don't know. It's it's. I don't know what it stands for, but it's, okay. that's the name of the group. Uh, it's an what accident. do I tell the group? What would you tell these senators? Because we got five or six senators who are right there, and we, and we need a couple of them to go. They're all Republicans. They're all from rural districts, and they're just worried about the gun <clears throat> folks. Well, there's nothing to worry about this little group. The fact of the matter is, I'm a gun guy too. And so are you. And so yep. is Meckler. And so is almost everyone involved in Convention of States. That this is a, a sort of a, a, a well, an outlier group. They're going to be a runaway convention, and they're going to take away the Second Amendment. Well, how can... All right, let's talk about this and talk for about all it. America. Yeah. You need 34 states to vote for this process. Correct. You need 38 state legislatures or conventions to ratify an amendment. How can there be a runaway anything? The opposite's the problem, getting us through this process. You only have a runaway convention, quote unquote, if 38 states go along. So it takes what? It takes 13 states to stop them. We have 13 states if there's a quote unquote runaway convention. Here's the bigger problem. 
We already have a runaway convention. It's called Congress. It's called the executive branch. It's called Joe Biden. They're, sh- they're using executive orders. They're using regulations. They're using all kinds of stuff. We have a runaway. When's the last time we actually amended the Constitution? They're talking about now America and Rick Santorum using federal lands for abortion clinics. I mean, these are sick people and they will do whatever they have to do. And we're moving strongly despite these opinions culturally and otherwise economically towards a, a an aggressive Marxist state. I really, truly believe this. I agree. And so what we need to do is embrace what our founding fathers did, what our framers did. They put two forms of amending the Constitution in the Constitution for a reason, for exactly the reason we're facing. It was Mason who got up and said, two, three days before the end of the convention, he gets up and he says, we're going to leave it to Congress to decide if we can amend the Constitution. What if Congress turns tyrannical? Then we're going to have a war. It's going to take violence. That's what he said. He was prescient. And so what you and I and and really several million others are proposing here, and Mark Meckler and so forth, is that we use the Constitution to save the Constitution. And so it is preposterous. We, We used to have Eagle Forum that would fight it. This group fights it. The John Birch Society fought it. Who cares? The fact of the matter is we already have a constitutional convention. They're meeting every damn day in Washington, D.C., We have no say whatsoever in what's taking place. None. They pass bills without our participation. You know this. They don't have regular order. We don't know who's doing what. They announce that they have a bipartisan deal. What we need is our Constitution back. It's impossible to have a runaway convention. It's impossible when you need 38 states to ratify. So that is a fear-mongering no-brainer. Does that help? I, no, I agree, and I, I and thank you for that. It's it's great to hear that. And let me just tell your listeners: there's two states right now where the bill is on the calendar, waiting for votes, and and we're very very close in both those states. One is the Senate in Pennsylvania, which I just spoke about, and so I would ask for for your listeners to call their state senators and ask them to support the convention of states, the resolution for convention of the states, and the other is in North Carolina. And here's the North Carolina ones even. Even more exciting because the House has already passed it. And so North Carolina, and we have been told, senators have come forward and said that there's enough to pass it, but the leadership won't bring it up. So, All right, let's hold on, Rick. I want to carry over because we're going to start naming some names and get into specifics. We need the whole nation to help. So don't hang up. We'll be right back. So we're back with uh, the great Rick Santorum. I don't want to be generic because we'll never get this done. So, Rick Santorum, if people want to know which Republican state senators in Pennsylvania to contact, where do they go to find their names? Um, well, I mean, I can tell you their names here on the on the show. Yeah. I mean, and these are folks again. These are good Republicans. They're good. So, don't, in other words, you're saying don't call them and abuse them. Just encourage them, them to look, do they, it. They, they're getting a lot. They're getting. A, they're hearing a lot from the Second Amendment crew and. And, you know, look, that, that's a... Wait a minute. A, I'm the Second Amendment crew. I know. I know. So they need. So if you're a Second Amendment person, you need to call these guys and say, look, I'm a Second Amendment person, and I disagree with these, with these other Second Amendment people. This whoever is, these guys are. Whoever these guys are. Because, again, these, aren't, these are good Republicans. They're good people. They're just, you know, listening to their constituents, so they just need to hear from others. That's, that's so who point. are these senators? So it's, it's uh, Senator Yaw. Uh, he's from up in no- northeast. How do you spell that? Y A W. Okay, he's from where? He's from up in uh, Williamsport area. All right, I know all these places. So go ahead, next one. Okay, uh, is Senator Gordoner, who's right next door? He's from the Bloomsburg area. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, Senator Robinson is from Allegheny County. He's from the Pittsburgh area, but he's a suburban Pittsburgh. So. More all right. Well. And uh, Senator Brooks. And she's from the, uh, again, western Pennsylvania, sort of Mercer County, which is uh, Meadville, that area. Mm-hmm. And then finally, Senator Vogel, and he's from Beaver County, so that's, that's sort of the Beaver, Beaver Falls, mm-hmm. that area. Wow, I know all these areas. So that they're all they're very all patriotic. Good, they're all good conservative areas. Yes. And these yep. are good conservative uh, members 
they just, you know, they're just, again, I, it's, it's hard for me to be critical of them because, you know, they're saying, well, we're listening to my constituents. I'm concerned about my constituents. So they just need to hear from maybe the other side. Yeah, because most of their constituents they're not hearing from. Exactly. They're hearing from this little band of, uh, of they're hearing misguided from a very individuals. They're vocal band of, of folks who, as you pointed out, are just unfortunately wrong on this issue, but they're very, very vocal. Mm-hmm. All right, folks, let's, uh, let's do what we can. Pennsylvania. Now, can I mention one other? North Carolina. Different We're story. Do that. Very yeah. important. In this case, you know, we have 26 votes we think we have, which is enough to pass it in North Carolina. Again, the North Carolina House has already passed it. In the Senate, uh, we have, uh, you know, the, the leader there who's not willing to bring it up for a vote. And so they need to get a hold of uh, Senators Rabin and Byrd and, and, uh, uh, and uh, Berger. There you go. Sorry about that. Lost it for a second. Mm-hmm. So Senators Berger and Rabin are the two guys that uh, need to hear. You know, anybody in North Carolina, they're in leadership. So you can call them. We have great leaders in Pennsylvania. Senator Ward, Senator Corman are doing a great job. They're willing to go. They're, they're ready to run it. But, but uh, not so in, uh, in North Carolina. You know, we had that same problem in Arizona, quite frankly, with Andy Biggs, believe it or not, until he got elected to the House of Representatives, and then when he left, we finally got it through. Ah, yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, Andy's a good guy, but he was wrong on this one. That's unfortunate. And many of them are, because yeah. they don't take the time to study it. That they is, think they're going to... I mean, yeah. I'll take... Uh, that's me, Mark. I mean, until yeah. you sort of, like I said, beat me over the head with it, you know, I, list, I had, you know, I listened to Phyllis Schlafly and many, and a few others who were, you know, had concerns about it, and so I just sort of shut off, shut out thinking about it and, and said, well, you know, it's too risky, but... The risk, as you pointed out, is not doing something. I think if there's any, I mean, I, I think our founders would be upset about a lot of things. I think they might be most upset with the state legislature who has the power to do something to curb the craziness in Washington, and they've been too cowardly to do it. Honest to God, there's no other way. In Washington, you were there, I've been there, we're playing defense all the time. We win a Washington few and then we celebrate. Fix itself. Let me assure no. you of that. No, they're not going to fix what they broke. Exactly. You're exactly right. And by the way, no offense, you don't need to join in. The Republican establishment's never going to fix what's going on here either. So Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, they, they all are very comfortable with the power they have, and they don't mind getting more of it because it gives them the ability to do what they think is best. And uh, it shouldn't be coming out of Washington. It should be coming out of our families, our communities, and if we have to, our states. This is exactly what the framers intended, ladies and gentlemen. And this is a constitutional way. It's a lawful way. We're not running around in the streets trying to overthrow the government. It's in the no. Constitution. That's, <laughs> That's right. the thing. People say, oh, you're, you're messing with the Constitution. No, we're following the Constitution. This exactly. is exactly what the, what the founders, why they put it in the Constitution is to give someone at the local level, at the state level, the power to check Washington. The Constitution was all about checks and balances, and this was the biggest check, and we haven't used it. No, and you know, the funny thing, Rick, is I was always opposed to it until I started studying it and then wrote a damn book on it, and it turns out that simultaneous with that, we hadn't even talked to each other, Meckler had turned to and started his organization. They just sort of happened at the same time. Did he ever tell you that? Uh, he did, and, and you know, uh, you were the first one to beat me over the head, and he was the second. So both yeah. of you guys have, have uh, it, took, it, took, uh, it took both of you to, uh, to get me in the disciples' camp. But, and, and again, it was just a matter of reading it and, and just, uh, you know, listening, looking at all of the facts. People, you know, uh, the problem is a lot of legislators, they just don't have time to, mm-hmm. you know, to dig through it. And, and so they, you know, logically, they listen to their constituents and try to try to parse together what they believe is the truth. Um, that's why I think it's so important that, uh, that their, uh, the, you know, constituents call these senators and let them know. All right. And folks, if you didn't hear all the names, we have the rewind that's up on MarkLevinShow.com immediately after the program. You can go right to this segment, the uh, last half hour of the program. Rick Santorum, you know what? We got to get together, and you have to come on more often. All you do is call me, my friend. You you call, I go. Yeah, you're terrific. God bless All to right. you and your family, God bless buddy. You. I just couldn't sit by anymore and do nothing. I always said I hated politics, but I found out that you can't really change things if you don't get involved. 
What we're looking for is somebody that uh, has the heart and wants to help save their country.